morning, folks. It's great to see all of you this morning. We've got a bunch of people traveling. We've got a bunch of people uh, doing other things that we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, it's great to see all of you. A uh, special uh, welcome back to the mainland for Arch and Marie. And uh, nice to see you this morning. And um, uh, as I said, so let me give you a quick update of what I know. Um, I know that uh, Doris is home from her surgery and doing well, according to Terry. And Terry's looking after her well, as he says. Um, uh, Doug Speakman, uh, not home from surgery, but uh, completed that. So uh, he's not with us this morning, but uh, and June isn't either. But uh, but keep praying for him. And he, he got through, so that's good. Uh, Sue, uh, home coughing, not COVID. She keeps testing, 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 but because uh, she knows she's around a lot of people, you know. I don't know if you're supposed to test anymore, but uh, anyway, she did, and it's not COVID, but she's coughing all night, so uh, it was kind of a noisy night at our house. Um, this week uh, is the uh, sort of the odd week for... Um, for our two gather daytime events, but I saw Darlene back and and a Bible study starting this week. Uh, yes, and that's at Tuesday morning at eleven. Mm-hmm. Bring a bag lunch, right? Bring a bring a little lunch if you want to, to have a little bit of that. Opposite. Yeah, okay. So stay stay on. So on the weeks, that, so this, is, this is every Tuesday, every Tuesday starting today for about six, seven weeks, I think. So that's exciting. So, um, so that's this Tuesday, 11 o'clock. Uh, and then, of course, our Tuesday gathering uh, is always, uh, always fun to be at. Um, lots of good stuff happens there. Uh, it's not structured. Please uh, know that. It's not structured. We're just there to enjoy each other's, uh, each other's stories, mostly. Um, I, uh, I have lots to say. I, I kind of brag about Tuesday night uh, when I talk to my, my leaders that ask, what's going on in Winterberry? They always ask that, you know, and uh, I talk about what uh, our two gather events, and uh, it's exciting to see what's happening uh, post-COVID and all that stuff coming back together. It's, um, it's pretty great. This morning, there was a lot of moving parts. Uh, a lot of moving parts, and I was uh, really glad to see Terry come in the door. I, I had pinched myself twice on the soundboard putting it together, but I figured it out. Um, and uh, right now, the one thing I noticed uh, that I didn't do is uh, something I'll do when the band's playing their first song. See if you can see it. It's kind of like Where's Waldo. The band's going to help us, though, and we're going to sing our first song, which is uh, a great song of the church, Glory to His Name. There's four verses, band folks, so we're going to sing two, and we're going to stop, and we're going to sing two more. Okay, so um, let's stand together. There's the words, Down at the cross where my Savior died, For cleansing I cried. There to my heart was His blood applied. Glory to His name. Let's stand together. Where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied the blood. precious fountain that cleanses from and saves from sin, I have entered in. We're going to talk about entering in today and what that means. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Let's lift up the third and fourth verses together. Oh, precious 
couple of other songs that we're going to sing here this morning and um, uh, one is uh, an old song that I'm just ex uh, really excited that uh, has come back to life and uh, never never was uh, set aside but uh, I'm really glad about the second song we're going to sing the first one is uh, one that you've uh, sung with me before I know Again, the song speaks of cleansing, it speaks of healing, it speaks of all the things that we look to the Savior for, and um, today we'll sing this together as uh, skip. <laughs> To the Jesus 
share now is a great song that we've been singing uh, for a long, long time, um, but uh, we'll put it on the screen. It says, My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies or pleasures, uh, <laughs> whichever you want to sing, uh, I resign. The, I, the, I, the idea is the, 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 the things that take me down. Uh, we talked about it a couple weeks ago in the in the book of Hebrews 12, the things that the things that set me aside, the things that weigh me down, the things that trip me up, follies, pleasures of sin, I, I, I lay them aside. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou, if ever I love thee, I, my Jesus, tis now. I know we sang this last week, um, but we're going to sing all three verses this week. So here we go. My Jesus, I quietness of this moment we come to you amidst the hustle and bustle of our lives we 
We set aside this moment, this hour, to be quiet, to lift up our praises, to come into your presence, to be in each other's presence. Lord, as we do that, we come with others on our hearts and we would make sure that we say in this place a prayer for, for Doug today, that you'll bring him to health and strength quickly, as I'm sure he desires. She'll give wisdom to those who care for him in these days. And we pray for June as she cares for Doug. Father, we thank you for the progress we've heard thus far for Doris, and we pray that uh, she will continue day by day to get stronger and better. And uh, again, thanks that Terry's there looking after her. Pray for Sue today. That you'll watch over her as she struggles with something, a kind of a virus of some kind, but uh, be with her, give her relief, pray. And for others, Lord, in our families that we bring in our hearts today, will you draw them near to you as we are drawing near to you? Will you hold them close to you as we desire to be held close today to you. And we love you. Let's just sing the first verse quietly, will you? My Jesus, I love thee. I know This, uh, this next uh, song we'll share is one that uh, I want you to sing along with. You know, what I've discovered about it is that it was written a long time ago, and it's one more of those songs that I love so much that's just kind of been brought to life again. And uh, you'll recognize some words, but uh, the, uh, the chorus says, You are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. You are light in the darkness. So we're going to sing this through. You sing it when you get used to it, when you get to kind of get the, the, the tune in your head. And um, then we'll bring it back, uh, maybe bring it back in a couple weeks to share together. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. 
I worship you. I worship you. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. So I can't let you go home without singing that chorus, right? It's pretty easy. It's one note, actually. So uh, I think we can do it. So if we back up one slide, there it is. Let's sing the chorus together. You are a way maker, a miracle work, promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are a way maker miracle worker promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you Please take your Bible and open it up to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And I know what some of you are thinking. I know that you're thinking that, uh, wait a minute, we were studying Hebrews chapter 12. And in my... Um, in my uh, secret sermon preparation that only, really only Sue is part of, um, this uh, passage today is uh, really us taking a moment to, to summarize the last four to six weeks of Hebrews studies. And so what I want you to do is take a moment in Hebrews 10. Now, I've been telling you that uh, the best way for us to study Hebrews 12 is for you to go home and read chapter 11. And I know you do that. And I've been reading it every week myself, just to remind myself of the, the patriarchs. But what we've been looking at in these last weeks is your faith. Maybe you didn't get that out of what we were saying, but we've been looking at your faith and how it works. And this morning, uh, this particular passage is where we're going to go to... Um, to bring that uh, sort of to a conclusion, that particular study in Hebrews. Because next week is Thanksgiving. And you know what the next event is? No, I won't say it out loud. But it's coming, isn't it? It's coming. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 says, Therefore, brethren and sisteren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly, the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. May God speak to us today from his word as we ponder it. Now, um, Sylvia is going to come and she's going to share a, a, a 
bit of uh, music with us, but the words, uh, the words are going to show up on the screen. Thank you, Sylvia. Great, great, great is the Lord. The um, last few weeks, we've been looking at uh, the foundations of our faith. We've been, we've been thinking about what does it mean to be a person of faith in a world that really doesn't uh, subscribe or to that uh, to that magazine you know um, and the the thing that we've been doing is looking at different angles of how we reflect what Jesus is all about and you know really that's that's the job of the church right that we reflect Christ to the community and we attract the community by that reflection but you know what I've noticed over the past years and we're at this a couple of years uh, that's for some reason, the reflection isn't catching the community like it should. You might even want to say it's not even catching the community like it used to. And we try all kinds of different things to try to catch the reflection of Christ and put it out to the community. We try all kinds of things to catch the attention of the community. And we still seem to find ourselves sometimes being ignored and I don't want you to be surprised about that as it relates to the church because all you've got to do is line that up with how your faith is accepted in the places where you go. I am from the era where we used to go and it, 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 it was this flood of memories when we were singing God save the 
King uh, a couple of weeks ago. But this flood of memories of public school, uh, grade school, uh, every single morning singing the national anthem, God Save the Queen, and the Lord's Prayer. And I'm in the era of that stopping, right, for all manner of reasons. I can remember when I was uh, a, a parent of kids in school and, and reviewing all of the reasons why the Lord's Prayer should be removed from the school. And I was a pastor, so I've lived through that era, and so have you. Where faith has become not quite so important, in fact, discarded to some degree. And I want us to just set the tone this morning to remind ourselves that the Hebrews, who this letter was written to, we're not quite sure who wrote it, some think Paul, some think others, doesn't really matter, it's a great letter, a little tricky to read through though, right? If you've read through it a few times, it's one of those letters that can get a little bit heavy going because it talks about the Old Testament and contrasts with the New Testament. It talks a lot about the things that are going on in Leviticus, one of my favorite books. Well, I get through it a couple times a year, but it's not one of my favorite reads. But all of the legal stuff, all of the laws of, uh, of the, uh, the Israelite children, the Hebrews were living in a world and a time where they had to live out their faith, just like us, in a world that was unaccepting of that faith doesn't sound a lot different than today. In fact, in a world that was sometimes hostile to their faith, well, I think you can relate. Sometimes hostile to our faith. And it required some confident holding on to the relationship that they had with Jesus. Well, there we are sets the stage quite well, and regular encouragement from one another. That was where, that was where the Hebrews were. Well, you know what, I, I wrote a statement that says this, that our faith, our faith, your faith, my faith, must also be lived out in a world and an environment that is less than understanding. In fact, really, if we were really to get into the mindset of the community, they don't even get us. They don't even get us, this Christianity thing. They don't really get it. They don't understand us at best, and they reject us and our faith at worst. But if I was to ask you, how valuable is your faith? At least three or four of you would be quoting scripture to me, said, to, you might even sing me a song. You might even sing me a song. Any coming to mind? Uh, you would be singing songs about how your faith is more precious than gold, more precious than rubies. We got all kinds of songs about how precious our faith is, how important our faith is to us. Yet we live out that faith in a world that discards it, by and large. So if I was to summarize the last few weeks of teaching from Hebrews, and what you've got to do to, to pick this up is just go, go back and read chapter 12. You know, I, I love summarizing things. I hate introducing things. Because if I introduce a sermon series, usually you go home and say, I wonder what, he, wonder what he's talking about. Today I can, we can summarize. So if you go back and read chapter 12 of Hebrews, you're going to see that we are living the light. The light reflects off of us, and we reflect it to the world. And it's a dark world. It's a dark world. They need the light, yet they don't know it. In the midst of how do we get there, well, it's a challenging life, isn't it? It's challenging. To live every day your Christian faith is a challenge every day. And there are distractions. I talked about them when we were talking about this, uh, this song this morning. There are things that weigh us down, we've said. There are things that trip us up. And both of those things are hazards along the road of faith. And we encounter them all the time. But God, in his wondrous, majestic wisdom, uses the tough times in our lives to strengthen us and to equip us to serve him, to make us more and more like him. He actually doesn't send us to a special school. He uses the school of life. You could call it the school of hard knocks if you want to, 
to equip us to be more and more like him. He actually matures us in the midst of the stuff that we go through, and it's not easy stuff to make us his people. Well, if I was to tell you where we're going today in the next 15 minutes or so, it's this. Okay, Brad, how do we stay strong in that environment? How do we stay strong in our faith, which we just agreed with sort of a little head shake, you gave me a little one, that, that it's more precious than gold to us, our faith, in a world that has devalued our faith, has devalued God, has devalued the church as unnecessary, not a priority for sure. Well, I've looked at Hebrews chapter 10, the passage that's in front of us this morning, and I found some things like gold nuggets that we kind of need to grab a hold of. So if you've got your Bible, you'll want to turn it back to Hebrews chapter 10. And
You see, I believe that this passage gives us the instruction to watch over one another. Now, does that mean that we're going to, you know, creep in each other's backyards and listen to each other's conversations? No, no, I'm not talking about that. But I'm saying that, that when people are hurting, the church has an opportunity to care deeply. When people are in trouble and struggling, the church has an opportunity to lift them up. When people are confused and in chaos in their life, the church has an opportunity to bring some peace to that situation. We have a call on our lives. We have a call on our church to watch over one another with a loving care in order to, the writer to Hebrews says, stir up love, not hatred, not division, not gossip, to stir up love. The, the, the picture that he's trying to give us is a, a, a little fire of coals, you know, out in your backyard. You better have some hot dogs because you're not allowed to have a fire in your backyard unless you're cooking with it. But so have some hot dogs over there. But the fire's, you know, the campfire, it's kind of gone down to some coals. You know what I'm saying? But you need it to fire up again. So you throw a little more wood on and you fan that thing into flame. Stir up love in the body, is what the writer to Hebrews is saying. So when you encounter one another, whether it's here on Sunday morning, whether it's Tuesday night, whether it's wherever, whether it's band or band practice or the groups that will gather or the Bible studies, our goal is to stir up love, to make sure that we're doing things for one another and with one another that brings love back to a fiery flame. The second thing the writer to Hebrews wants us to stir up is good works. See, that's the call of the church. We come together to stir up love and good works. We enter in. It's our personal relationship with Jesus. We draw near and listen to him and what he has to say to us. We hold fast because it's a tough world that we live in. And we watch over one another because it's a tough world that we live in. To stir up love good works. And verse 25 says this, don't forsake the assembly together, as is the manner of some to do. <laughs> it's a tough one. You know, in this day and age, we don't want to be ragging on people. I mean, there's people that, you know, um, I, I, if you don't come to church, there are churches where they'll come to you. Uh, I, I know, um, in this church, if you don't come to church, you're probably going to get a phone call. That's proven. But, uh, but you know, if we miss you, we're going to let you know about that. But I'm just saying to you that, that the coming together, which has been forsaken by many over the last couple of years, and again, when I'm talking to the people that help me to do what I do above me, my leaders in the Salvation Army, I brag about Winterberry. I do. I brag about our church. And I say, you know what? There's not too many people not coming back. I see three or four of them. I mean, we've lost a few during moves and stuff like that, but you know what? Our congregation has come back together. And I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you full credit for that. It's amazing. A few people traveling today, but that's okay. But it's been a danger since the beginning of church. The people forsake the coming together. Ah, well, I got other things to do. I've heard that one. The kids got stuff soccer and hockey and I was talking to somebody just recently probably they're in this room I don't know but you know, going to hockey practice in their Salvation Army uniform under an overcoat at six o'clock in the morning freezing in the freezing in the arena uh, but then going to church yeah it, it's it's easy not to go my late brother-in-law says it's easy to find excuses there's a thousand excuses not to go there's really only one excuse to go to the gathering. The love of Jesus. Don't forsake the gathering. It's an opportunity to build one another up. And I said this last week, I'll close with this as I bring this to a, to a stop, but the beauty of living your faith in a hard, harsh world is that you get to practice in an environment of love. 
the beauty of learning to be a deep person of deep faith is that you get to learn and practice it here where people love you and care about you, where people will edify and build you up, where people will be on your side. You get to practice it here and take it out there. Because as Hebrews tells us in this amazing verse I've loved for so long, see to it that you do these things even more and more as the day approaches. You see, the truth of all this is that he is returning. Jesus will return. It's his promise. It's written in the scriptures for us to read, to believe. So on that day, the day, my Bible capitalizes day, the day, on that day, I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to have any regrets at all. I want to be able to say I entered in. I entered into solid grounded, confident relationship with Jesus. I pressed in close. Every chance I had, I pressed in close to him. That's my desire. I want to be able to say that on the day. I held fast. I want to be able to say it. I want to be able to say that in the storms of life, my anchor held because I made sure it held. And when I saw it coming uh, loose, I went and re-sunk re that anchor. I watched over when my brothers and sisters were going astray. I, I cared about that. When my brothers and sisters were struggling, I was there. I want to be able to say that. And I built others up on the day when I stand before the king. I want to line up with Hebrews chapter 10 and the things that he calls us, calls us to do and to be there. Let's pray together. Sylvia is going to help us with one of my favorite songs. My life must be Christ's broken, and my love is outpoured wine, a cup overfilled, a table spread beneath his name and sign that others in the fellowship refreshed fed may share his life entered in drawn close not wavering through mine I'm going to quietly lift this song up and if God leads you to come and be at this place of prayer we've put it here for you but be in prayer seek his face this morning enter into the holy of holies with him today and every day let's sing my life must be Christ's broken bread. My love is outpoured wine, a cup or filled, a table spread beneath his name and sign that other souls refreshed and fed may share his life through mine. Look at these words and make them your prayer. My all is in his hands for him to bless and to break. Life is hard and God uses those tough times to shape us and mold us and bring us to where he needs us to be. Beyond the wine, beyond the brook, his wine press stands and that's my way. Resolve the whole of love's demands to give for his due take. Let's sing the second verse together in prayer. My all is in the master's hands for him to bless and break beyond the brook his wine press stands and thence my way I take. Resolved the whole of love's demands to give for his dear sake. Lord, we 
Lord, let me share that grace. Let me share it with others. Let me share it with him that did sustain him, the burden of the fruitful vine, the gift of buried grain, all speaking of the challenges that we face in life. But who dies with thee, O word, O Jesus, divine, shall rise and live again as we've shared this morning. Let's lift this up and we'll have a prayer and then we'll sing our closing song. Lord, let me share that grace of thine wherewith thou didst sustain the burden of the fruitful vine, the gift of buried grain, who dies with thee. Lord, it's the promise that we stand on today that when the day comes that we shall stand before you face to face. We stand on that promise that we have entered in, we've drawn close, that we've held fast, that we've built each other up for the body, for your glory. Lord, help us to put all of those things into practice in our lives today and each day as we draw close to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And in a second, the band's going to help us to sing our closing song, which um, asks a number of questions, a series of really good questions. But the answer, the answer to each of those questions that we have in our life, that uh, the world has but doesn't know it, uh, is nothing but the blood of Jesus can cleanse us and make us whole. We're going to stand together. The band is going to help us along as we sing our closing song, Nothing But the Blood. Who can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I see nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I plead, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. reminds us that nothing can atone for sin. You can't be good enough. Only the blood of Jesus can pay the price for your sins. Nothing that's good that I have done can bring me into his presence. Only through the blood of Jesus our Savior. There's two verses left. We're going to sing both of them. This one and the last one, please. Two verses. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing.
nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. morning. God bless each one of you. The band is going to share with us the benediction and we'll sing it together. We'll sing it over one another. Father, let thy love remain. Oh, Father.